Okay, you got this book out, right? right yeah. Clearly. But a lot of it centers on the accident you had. You were hit by a car. Mm. Young kid, early morning, Saturday morning, yep. right? May 27th, May 2018, 2018, 8.55am is when my Garmin died. The same day, I heard about it from someone sent me a message. I thought, holy shit, dude. Because you know why? Because it was on a Sunday morning and it was the one day that the new Minister of Finance wasn't making some controversial statement and it was a slow news day. So the media guys thought, oh, well, nothing else happening today. Oh, look, Azran got hit. Let's write about it. So it I was the one news day. I heard about it on WhatsApp, right. not in the mainstream media. Sure. Yeah, a friend of yeah. mine, Noel, right? right? You know yeah. Noel Lim, right? She yeah. told me, I said, shit, dude. Was he okay? Was my second question. Right. So what happened? And how did you come back from that? Um, well, what happened? So, you know, like I normally Was go he for drunk? Hard... Okay, so here's the thing. It doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I go on 100 kilometer rides, 200 kilometer rides, nothing happens. This was just an eight kilometer ride because two weeks earlier, May 13th, I just finished Ironman Vietnam. I qualified for the Ironman 70.3 World Championships, was, which was going to be in South Kona. Africa. Oh, no, no, no Kona. Th- it's a different race. It's not Kona. It's the uh, half Ironman distance, right? Okay. Uh, and this year was South Africa, or well, last year, South Africa, 1st September. So I installed new electronic shifters on my bike. And that was just an eight kilometer ride around the, the neighborhood to play with my new electronic shifters. And boom, uh, you know, this car must have gone fast and hit me from behind. I completely have no idea. I have no recollection what happened. Uh, but basically, I was trying to reconstruct it with my doctors. It looks like um, the car kind of just kind of knocked my uh, right fibula. The first, like the bumper of the car hit here, breaking my your, right your fibula. Foot, yeah. uh, the, the sort of the, yeah, the, the, the lower leg bone that flipped me. And then I went crashing into the windshield and, and the, you know, like the, the, um, the, the frame of the car probably has my head, the shape of my head, Should like do. bang there. And then the driver panicked and probably braked and then pff, I got flung in front and then landed smack here and kind of cracked the skull. So Hence the skull. What's a little of that, stuff here, all, all kinds of uh, like 40 plus stitches. Um, and so I think a couple of things. One, you know, it was... Um, people may not know this, but it was extremely depressing and dark when you're lying in neuro ICU, right? Because the first two to three days, people, they, they were all worried about the bleeding in my brain. Is it going to get worse? Do they have to go in and, and drill? And in neuro ICU, they wake you up every four hours. To make sure you don't lapse into a coma. Right, and like at 10 p.m., they're going to wake you up. What's your name? What's your IC number? What day is it today, right? Okay, go to sleep <laughs> again, right? At 2 a.m., okay, wake you up again, right? 6 a.m., wake you up again. And some of, and you know, you're, you're in this ICU ward with eight other patients and everybody gets woken up, right? Bang, bang, bang. Um, and, and it just kind of really screws up with your mind. Three of my four limbs in a cast. I can't even scratch my nose. Like, it really is frustrating and you're like, shit, you know? Uh, what's gonna happen to my life, my family, and do I have to close down the business? Like, all these thoughts. But the scariest bit is when all those thoughts stop. When it became a deafening silence. Like, you just cannot make any sense of it, right? And uh, it's interesting. My defense mechanism is when visitor hours came, and the ICU visitor hours are stricter, right? At 12 noon, okay, visitors come. I suddenly transform into this cheerful person and I ask people about work and everything. But when they leave, like it just gets really dark again. And that's why, um, you know, we've be, we, you know, mental health is a major issue and we don't understand it, right? That's why, you know, when people like Robin Williams and, and Anthony Bourdain... They take um, their own lives. Right? And they think, oh, but you're such cheerful, you're a comedian and everything. But see, we have these fronts that we put up, right? But when we can't deal with that, when we have our alone time, it is, it is really scary. Now, in a way, the one thing that I think kind of turned it around for me was here I'm like kind of lost and like, I don't know what's going to happen. And interestingly, during one of the visitor hours on day four or day five, some well-meaning friends and family members come and they start to admonish me. They start to scold me for cycling on Malaysian roads. Don't you know Malaysian roads? In fact, one of them is, you know, one of your earlier guests, right? Um, saying, uh, stupid decision, you know, like, you know, you know, Malaysian drivers are reckless. You shouldn't be cycling, right? You're a father. Think about your kids. You shouldn't be taking those risks. And it just kind of really like slapped me and woke me up. I'm thinking, well, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Do I really want to tell my kids that life is about avoiding risks, that you play it safe, or you know what? You got to go out there and do it. 
and you are gonna get knocked down. You cannot go through life not getting knocked down. But the one thing that counts is you gotta learn to get back up. And I just somehow decided that was the most powerful thing I can tell my kids. And not and you don't teach your kids by telling, you teach your kids by showing, right? And somehow that was, I just decided, look, I just gotta do it just because I want to shut these well-meaning friends and family members and, and tell my kids that, you know, life will knock you down, but you gotta get back up. And within a number of weeks, you're back in the saddle, right? And you're competing in a race. I remember you told me yeah, this the last yeah. time so we met. Yeah, yeah, so I think day, I'm gonna say like day 30 or 35, I was on, back on my bike trainer, even with my arm in a cast because I just wanted to start. Day 84 was my first outdoor bike ride. Three months. Day 84, yeah. Huge, and then man. day 174 was Ironman Langkawi again. Ah. Ah, that's huge. Yeah, man, when you when you got to be in your bonnet and you just want to say, you know, yeah, I got to yeah. show this, I got to yeah, yeah. do this. And it was painful because, you know, initially, this arm could only go up 90 degrees. I couldn't lift my hand, right? Um, I couldn't do a single push-up. It was just the most frustrating thing. Um, and it was painful, like, every day, physio, exercise, just like getting one more CM extension, one more CM extension, one more CM extension. And the days when, you know, it's like, like you cry when they're kind of working on your shoulder but you know you gotta just for me just I wanted it like, yeah it's all it's all up here right yeah was, it, was it scary getting back on the bicycle and going out the open road again um well so I, I I even before that day 84 from day 30 I just kept visualizing it like I kept saying like, I'm gonna go on it I'm gonna go on it. that's the reason why I decided on Langkawi as my comeback race because you know it was like my fourth race I went back to the same exact hotel you know La Pari Pari uh, same course oh, Karina's place Karina's place yeah. right because uh, I wanted the familiarity so yeah. that it, it just you know tells you like I can do this and that was important I didn't want to go to a new race right so if you kind of manage it and set it up so that um, you know you can keep telling yourself you can do this, you've done this before. That was so important to be mentally ready. It was a much more mental preparation than it was the physical recovery.